Hello and welcome to Local Time. This is Jessica Eyes, your host. And joining us today is Michael Rourke, the Executive Director of Arlington Alexandria Coalition for the Homeless, and also a client, uh, Cisse Takala. Cisse, did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> okay, great. I wanted to welcome you both here and just thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us and talk to us about this issue. So, Michael, um, to start with, I wanted to see if you could give us a rundown on the Arlington Alexandria Coalition for the Homeless, which I understand you, you call AACH, correct? We do. Okay, great. It's just the Arlington Alexandria Coalition for the Homeless is quite a mouthful when you have to do it many times during the day, and AACH fits us just as well. And just speaking, not just for myself, but for our staff and clients, we appreciate the, I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you tonight. Uh, AACH was founded over 28 years ago by citizens in Arlington and Alexandria that were concerned with the growing homeless population in the Washington metropolitan area. Uh, a lot of the more visible homeless in those days, and maybe today even, are the folks that you might see on the street, single people. But our founders were concerned about the families and what was happening with the families that became homeless and where would they go. And since our founding in 19, uh, 19 I gotta do the math, 1985, um, our mission has been to move homeless families to independence. And we have literally moved thousands of families to independence in the past 28 years. That's great. And uh, you said that your organization, AACH, really focuses on families. Do you ever accept people who come in just alone as a single person? We do when we have room, mm -hmm. and we seldom have room. Uh, we don't accept single men. We do accept single women if there's room and on occasion. Sometimes we'll take, uh, if we have room, we'll take a pregnant woman, and then she'll stay with us because a woman and child is a family in and, and our way of thinking. We also take, we take men with children also, and people might not realize that you know that's uh, it's not it's not prevalent a prevalent condition but we do we have had dads with kids that have been our clients in our mm -hmm. shelter and in our programs great and can you give us a, a little bit of rundown on how does AACH work um, you're a nonprofit that's correct we, we are a nonprofit uh, we work in conjunction with um, programs that identify and accept homeless families into our shelter programs. We have two shelter programs. One is Sullivan House that many Arlington residents have heard of and support with their generosity. And Sullivan House is a facility located in Clarendon which has 10 apartments in it. And into those 10 apartments, those are independent apartments as you and I might live in a, in a mm -hmm. garden style apartment. Sure. And into those 10 apartments, we uh, sometimes are, are able to put 14 families. And when you do the math, you say, well, how do you put 14 families into 10 apartments? And I asked that question when I first got to sure. ACH. how do we do that? <laughs> and quite simply, the staff said, we double bunk the single moms with babies. Right. And that works so well. I thought at first, geez, I wonder how it does work. But upon watching it over the years, it works so very well that it gives, it gives each of the women who are the moms of the babies mutual support. They can take a break. They can watch one another's. One can watch the children while one mm -hmm. cooks. One can watch the children while one might be able to go out and take a walk or go grocery shopping. So in the Sullivan House, we're able to put as many as 14 families. Our second program, which we call Adopt-A-Family, is a transitional housing subsidized housing program uh, that's twice the size of Sullivan House and almost invisible because it is a what HUD would term a scattered site program. And throughout the city of Alexandria and county of Arlington, we might have somewhere between 33 and 35 families living in their own apartments. The lease is in their own name and they uh, work with us and receive case management and rent subsidization from, um, from AACH on their path to independence. Many of our clients from Sullivan House graduate into our Adopt-A-Family program and move on to independence from there. That's great. And um, Cissé, now you were a client of AACH. Are you still one? No, I've finished already the uh, contract. Okay, and what, did you participate in Sullivan House? Or were you a part of Adopt a Family? Uh, personally, uh, just uh, there is a 
celebration program mm -hmm. when uh, they finish the, uh, our contract. Last time there is a graduation at uh, that uh, we are finished already, but uh, just we are families. After graduation, still we are working together. They serve, they serve us. We need a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of assistance from them, especially mm -hmm. not economically now. Previously, it was economical, but now just uh, exchange of information. Sure, they mm -hmm. they help you. Of course. Sure. Just okay. But you were in. Excuse oh, go me, ahead. I'm sorry, no, but you were in the adopt a family program. Of course. Yes. Okay. Of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. And did that? Did you find that to be helpful? And did that work well for you and your family? Of course. Even uh, the frustration starts of when I was in my home, home country. But my wife, she came here, and then once she get, uh, she joined the ASH. Uh, proudly, I came and joined uh, my families. Mm -hmm. The and first you have you have children? Yes, I have two two children. You have two children. Yeah, two children. The first one, is, uh, the elder one is fifteen, the younger one is twelve, and then they're uh, honored students now. Here. You must have been so glad to reunite with them. Of course. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. No yeah. doubt. That's, That's a blessing. Great. God bless them. Uh, really, mm -hmm. we are satisfied. And um, <clears throat> when you came here, how did how did AACH help you to get onto your feet? What problems were you encountering? Uh, the first one is to adapt the dynamic business environment. It's a new system. Culturally, there is a big difference. Even they served us to adapt the environment. Mm -hmm. The so it was during your adjustment period? Yeah, adjustment period. Okay. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. The second one is to cover our cost. Sure. The big cost is home. My wife, she earned this 1200 per month. But the uh, rent expense for two bedrooms is starting from, at uh, the minimum is 1500 Still, right. I have paid 1700 And then just the assist us they covered 75% of our home cost. And now that's why we have uh, in our two foots now. So you were able to, with the assistance of AACH, manage to get on your own two feet as a family. Of course. Mm -hmm. Even uh, they assist us searching, looking for jobs also. Mm -hmm. And then a resume, the type of resume in Ethiopia, and here is a lot of difference right. and then they have as assist us in looking for uh, free vacant posters sure yeah so Cisse mentioned Michael that um, you do assistance with with resumes and that leads me to another something that I had wanted to talk to you about is I understand you have a career assistance program with the families uh, that come and join you we do uh, it's a career development program and we, the program is designed to work with uh, graduate student interns from George Mason University that can work with the individual uh, adults in the family and beginning with uh, testing and assessment of what their skills are, sure. uh, they can, they can, and, and we, we call it a career development program because we're thinking not just of a job but as a, as a career. You know, we could probably get folks jobs in, you know, various fast food industries or other things, but we would prefer our folks to be on path to a career that they can, you know, support their families and move forward in. It's, it's a goal towards long-term sustainability. Self-sufficiency, self absolutely. Sustainability, self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I said, we work in partnership with George Mason University, and through a series of grants, we're able to fund that. And the graduate students bring in a, a high degree of energy, current learning, uh, testing, and uh, things they need to do to actually see what, you know, I, I've heard people say, well, I want to do thus and such. But when you sit and talk with them and assess what they want to do and look at their test scores for various um, uh, vocational opportunities. Well, maybe they're thinking one thing, but they're more prone to something else. And sure. We, and we find we find that that works very, very well. I think well that with the all folks. of us would benefit you from know, that. Actually, I, I, I mean, right. re really, I mean, it just yeah. it kind of makes sense. But yeah. you know, particularly somebody that's come in and undergone a, a great deal of, of stress and and, and cultural uh, transition, it, it, you know, they. 
they need an opportunity to, to look inward and, and see that this is what they really might want to do. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, a, it's a relatively new program with us, and it's a lot more than just helping folks write resumes, but it's to the point that, uh, you know, the, the, the counselors may go, you know, take the person to the job interview and even sit outside the room and, you know, you just really give support them the type of support that they right. need. And it's right. working very, very well. That's great. Um, Sista, you know, when you were in Ethiopia, what did you work in? Um, professionally, I'm an accountant. For the last 10 years, 10 years, I've served as a general manager in well-reputed uh, companies, mm -hmm. just like Pepsi-Cola, Dash & Brewery, Tractor Assembly Plant, uh, and just like Metro, there is a Wale Intercity Bus Enterprise. So when you came here to the United States to join your family, you did you feel like you had to start from scratch? Of course. Mm -hmm. I've seen it, the environment. I Google it, I scan it, just, I was expecting just, I'm, I'm professional, uh, I will have uh, professional jobs, but when uh, you go to the system, it's a challenge. It's very, di it was very it, different. It, it's very yeah. different, very different. And, um, and in Ethiopia, English is not the native language. It's not a native language. Right. Second so you language. had to deal with the language change. Of and, course. Right. Yeah. Right. Cultural change, language change, it's a lot of. Did you participate in the career development program? Here in ASH, mm -hmm. of course. And um, what do you work in now? Now I'm working in Monday Properties as a customer service representative, just data management. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like you're on a career track here? Just, just I'm on the way. Yeah. I'm on the way. Great, great. So building towards a towards a sustainable future. Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Michael, I think a lot of us, you know, we think of Arlington County as being a a tending to be a pretty wealthy, um, well-to-do county, but yet there is home this homelessness you mentioned. Um, what is what are the causes of homelessness here in this area? What leads people to your door? There's a couple of things. One of the first that comes in mind uh, is, is one of our biggest challenges, and that is the lack of affordable housing. Um, as you said, you know, Arlington is a very expensive place to live. When you look at the median income, I think I saw it was a, over $100,000. But keep in mind that if you... The, if the average is 100,000 and somebody makes 250, well, how do you average out that 250? I mean, yeah. there's people below that average too. You have too. someone making 30,000. To get to that exactly. average. Mm -hmm. And just the lack of affordable housing when when Cissé said what the, what the cost would be where his wife made 1200 a month, but you know, how are you going to get a two bedroom apartment here that's 18 no, or 1900 dollars? I I sign the rent checks every month from, you know, for all our folks in our adopt a family program and the rent checks run from you know, 900 and some odd dollars for a small efficiency apartment to uh, over $2,500. And the lack of affordable housing is one of the first things that bring people into uh, our program. A second one is that a number of our clients are, are women that have been abandoned or abused or some combination thereof. There's often children involved. They've, out, they've, they've used up their social network that where they could stay with their sister-in-law or stay with friends and really they know that they're going to be homeless and they process through the uh, community assistance branch at Arlington County and say at the end of the month I won't have an apartment or at the end of the month I'm going to have to leave my sister's place and I'm going to need a place for my child and I to stay and we meet weekly with the other shelters in the in the community as well as the folks from the community assistance branch in Arlington to make sure that everybody gets a home. What are some of the biggest challenges that you face with these people who are just entering into, into your programs? Many people come with what we would term barriers to housing for them. Mm -hmm. Folks that have uh, lost apartments in the past because they couldn't keep up the payment. Uh, folks that may have a criminal history. Uh, folks that may have very, very bad credit. 
if you want to rent an apartment, that you know that th those property managers are going to check you out as they should. I would, you know, if I was renting my apartment to somebody, I'd want the property manager sure. to check them out. And many of our folks come with bad credit, judgments against them. Uh, just, you know, maybe there's some problems in their past. Some folks have, you know, successfully recovered from a chemical addiction, but still, you know, that may be part of their record somewhere. And, you know, they're... They, they need a chance. They, they need a chance, and there's some obstacles that with some help they can overcome. Mm -hmm. And um, do, do the clients, some of your clients that come to you, do they, do they have self-esteem issues? Do they, do they need to be built up to feel like they can be a contributing member of a workforce? Do you encounter that? Some do, some don't. A lot of it is, is just the, a lot of the folks, they seem to me, do they come into us and they're just somewhat stunned that all this, this happens for many people very quickly. It's a very quick spiral that they've, you know, lost control of their situation, lost their place to live. They need help. One of the first things we do is just a normalization. Try to get things back to normal as soon as possible with them so they can take a deep breath and see where they are, see where they need to go, and work with their case manager to make that pathway to where they need to mm -hmm. go. I, I was uh, doing a little bit of reading up on, on your success rate, and I understand it's 80%, is 80%. that right? So 80% of the people who come in your door make it through your program and are, as Siste said, standing on their own two feet. Is that right? And, or and, or mm -hmm. as I would like to say, they've become loyal alumni of, <laughs> a, of AACH. We do have an alumni program. It comes with a welcome letter and alumni membership card. Yes. And, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, AACH is a great organization and our clients make it that great organization. Right. And our successful yeah. clients just make it all the more. Are you planning on volunteering with AACH? No doubt. Leave yeah. alone me, even my kids. Right. My kids. You know the problem? Even not only the uh, the, uh, the uh, renting an apartment, it's, mm -hmm. it's not the cost factor. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, revenue requirement. You know, if, if I need to rent an apartment for 1,400, I have to give them uh, annual check stub in, uh, Oh, right. Pro proof of, of, proof yeah, of your ability to pay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Leave alone the cost. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why we face all these challenges through ASH. Mm -hmm. They wrote it a letter. And they, they said, uh, so how are, your, how are your kids doing now? No, they are doing fine. They're doing fine. They are doing fine. They are honor students, thanks to God. Did you life. say they're honor students? Honor students. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Always we present all the honor, the certificate to ASH. Oh, really? For our that's, case manager. That's great. Yeah. It's her uh, reward. Yeah. That's really. Happy to hear that. Um, so I know that you do, speaking of, of uh, CSA's children, I know that you do have a lot of children in your program. That's about 60%. Sometimes as much as two-thirds of our clients are kids. A typical population in the shelter might be um, with 14 apartments, we might have uh, uh, 16 adults and, and uh, 30, 30 children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a good, no, maybe not that many, 16 adults and 26 kids, but at any one time uh, throughout all our families, uh, we would have maybe 60%. And uh, do you have any specific youth programs in place to help them out? Oh, we do. We do. We have homework helper every day after school, and the kids with, uh, that are more needy with their academics than others uh, often get a permanent tutor assigned or a special tutor, somebody that works mm -hmm. uh, directly with them. Uh, a couple, we have the reading connection come, and uh, the kids read uh, one night a week. Uh, the junior league is very supportive of what we do, and they they come in and work with the kids. So we have, and, and we also take trips. Uh, the kids love to take trips. We've got a, a special program coming up now. We're working in conjunction with the Smithsonian Institute for the kids that are um, what would you might call tweens, eleven, twelve, and sure. thirteen. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be uh, in a. Uh, program where they where they're going to decide on what they might like to do in their in the future and in their lives and then go on to a training out to the 4-H center in uh, uh, Front Royal mm -hmm. so it's a combined Smithsonian 4-H we're working with the uh, uh, the Arlington Virginia Cooperative Extension and uh, 
and with with our with our tweens, we've got uh, six young people that are working with mm -hmm. these folks. So that's an exciting program that we're going to be doing too. But most of all, again, with it's the normalization, the just getting the kids into their routine because I think kids do better with a routine. You know, when you come in, you get your snack. They come over to the to our uh, to the room where the kids gather, and we have staff there, and the volunteers come in, and they have a nutritious snack. And uh, then they then they do their homework, and it gives the parents some respite, you know, from from the kids and you know in their work day and everything. And uh, then we, as I said, we 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 take trips. I think the last one the kids went down to uh, uh, Roosevelt Island. Oh, you nice! Know, you know, just down yeah. down to Roslyn, but sure. then to walk across and then right. walk around the island and be that close to the Potomac. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've done some other things where they went to a uh, Washington Washington Mystics game where uh, AACH was recognized as a community partner, and uh, the kids got to do that. So there's a lot of opportunity for the kids. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, so Cisse's family is from Ethiopia. Do you, do you help a lot of families that are international? What percentage, approximately? A rough percentage might be about 25% of folks that might come from uh, sub-Saharan Africa, from uh, the, uh, the Horn of Africa, e Ethiopia and Iridia. Uh, and um, Somalia sometimes, and we've had families from Morocco and Ir uh, Iraq mm -hmm. uh, that have been in the shelter. One of the one of the you know confidentiality is very very important you know, sure. with our clients. Sure, absolutely. And, and particularly with the kids that you know our kids go to school with your kids, and you know it's tough enough being a teenager today without being the teenager from the homeless shelter. But I had to gasp a couple years ago when one of our kids was on the front page of the Washington Post working with his, he, he had gone to Wakefield High School also, and he was working, he was a very successful young man in high school and they had profiled him because of his, because of his family status. And thankfully it never really mentioned that he was homeless and living in mm -hmm. the AACH Sullivan House. But, uh, you know, we, we do have a lot going on with our kids. Right. So what do you think really differentiates AACH from other homeless shelters? One of our real strong points, and Cissé can chime in at any time, is that our case managers are women that have been doing this for a number of years. Uh, they are experienced. I don't think you can surprise them. I don't think you can bluff them. That's a nice term I use, bluff, but you can't bluff them at all. They have been doing this long enough that they know exactly what they need to do to help you. And if you let, if you will work with them, I can almost guarantee your success in our programs. Mm -hmm. And I think that our our staff differentiates us from other programs that serve, and, and not to disparage any other other group. Oh, of course people not. Are working Every, very, very hard. Of course but I not. look at our case managers, and they hate to hear me say that, but the, our case managers probably have averaged 25 years apiece in in this line of work. They know what they're doing. They are trained professionals and mm -hmm. they they are just outstanding people and they they are the reason that AACH is as successful as it is. Cissé, are you still in touch with your case manager? Yeah, still. Yeah. 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 If my kids suffer even suffer with the fever, immediately we give the we give her a call just for uh, advice. Of course. Yeah. Sure. That's really, they are friendly, they are well-hearted, they mm -hmm. are dedicated, they are smart, they are a good coach. You'll be sending them Christmas cards for the next of course. 50 years, <laughs> right? Of course. <laughs> and now they're all going to want pay raises. <laughs> <laughs> when they see that. <laughs> I'll go back to <laughs> Which actually, speaking of pay raises, that leads me to another question is, is how, do you, how do you get your funding? Good question. In mm -hmm. fact, he says, asked me that in the car. He said, where, where did the funding come from? Where's the money I, come I, from? I, I, I would, you know, just in rough terms, 70% of our funding is through government grants and contracts. Okay. Uh, and by government, I mean the federal government, uh, Arlington County, uh, the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, and then the city of Alexandria. Mm -hmm. Pretty much in that descending order in terms okay. of the amount. Do you get a lot through private donations? Uh, we get the... the, the the general public is very generous, and when you say do you get a lot, that's relative. Okay, we could always sure. we could always use more. 
All right, um, yeah. You know, we, we raise uh, some of the money ourselves with events. We have mm -hmm. a, our signature event is a kickball tournament that's conducted every, every August, and we have uh, up to 32 teams of 15 players each, and we've had it over at Longbridge Park the last two years, over just north of Crystal City. It's a beautiful facility, the, the county facility. But uh, to have a kickball tournament that puts, you know, kids and adults, it's a family day, and for me to walk out onto a field and see five to six hundred people with an AACH t-shirt, and all the teams have different colors, but all the shirts are the same, right. but to see five or six hundred people with uh, AACH t-shirts on is a thrill. And that's our, that's how, that's our big money maker. Mm -hmm. uh, we have other events like wine tastings and uh, peels and newsletters and things that we do, but uh, uh, the kickball tournament, which we call Safe at Home. Safe at Home. And uh, so a little double entendre there, but you know, it's uh, the kickball tournament is, is uh, our annual event. Did Cissé, did you and your family play kickball this last August? Uh, no, they are uh, a swimmer, good swimmers. Okay. Uh, they are not familiar with the, uh, this game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next August? Yeah. They are, okay. <laughs> they need uh, basketball. Sure. Swimming. Yeah. 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 Um, they like it. So uh, we've been talking about how you can always use more mm -hmm. donations, which uh, also leads me to another question, which is how can community members help with your program? Well, we, we can always use volunteers. Mm -hmm. And as any, non, as any small nonprofit, volunteers are the lifeblood of, of what we're able to accomplish. Uh, our staff is very small. I think we have, including myself, we have 10 full-timers, and we probably have 22 people on the payroll altogether, and the other 12 are custodians, and we run a 24-hour operation at the shelter. So somebody sitting right. at the front desk now, and so we have round-the-clock staff on. That's not a big staff, mm -hmm. and people can help in various ways. I mean, we have people call and say, I can give you one day. Well, can you come and help clean out the pantry and, you know, just check some cans for expiration dates? Or uh, an alumni group will call and say, how can we help? They say, well, we'll say, well, we're getting ready for springtime, and would you want to come in the last weekend in March and help us, uh, you know, rake a little bit and clean up some the yard? Some spring cleaning. A little yeah. spring cleaning, <laughs> exactly. There's, there's a lot yeah, of different things. Yeah, there's always something to be done. Uh, if, we're gonna ha if folks want to work with kids, we're going to want some permanency. Mm -hmm. Naturally, if you're going to work with children, you're under going to go a background check which is, you know, will be take place before we allow you to, and you'll be supervised by our staff when you do that, but we'd want some continuity. We don't want a different person working with the, one of our children, you know, every week. We would like to, you know, sign on for the semester right. if you want to do that. And if you want to help, you know, one of the folks learn to read or help one of the kids with them, you know, with their, you know, if they need to develop math skills, then maybe you can be, you know, you can help over a period of time, but sure. there's many opportunities, and they just if you Google AACH, we pop up. First, that was I was going to say. Yeah. What's your website? Well, it's aachhomeless.org. www.aachhomeless.org. But okay. in the world of Google, in once the world you put of Google, in AACH, AACH, it pops up first. <laughs> it's and, a new and world. We're huh? Right there. Yeah, it Didn't, is. weren't you Googling uh, the United States from Ethiopia? You mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a Google world now. Um, well, I just wanted to, you know, we're wrapping up here, but I wanted to, you know, obviously Cissé is definitely a success story, his, his family um, coming here and, and getting now, you know, being on their own and um, the two kids who are doing great and honor students. Um, do you have any other stories that you can share? I would just say that Cissé's class was our largest graduating class yet, and I would take our best, but we graduated 25 families. No kidding, uh, this, this year? This past year, yeah, in right. June. We hold our graduation in June, mm -hmm. and we graduated 25 families to independence, and we're just very, very proud of that. And in the last three years, I think four of our graduating families have been able to purchase homes here in Northern Virginia. Oh, that's wonderful. We're very, very proud of right. that. Our folks are, are very, very entrust, industrious. Our, our clients are really a source of both strength and pride for us, and... Uh, they, they make us proud. Well, thank you so much, both of you, Michael Cisse, for, for joining us today. And I want to thank all of you for watching Local Time.